Hi guys, my name is Chloe, I'm with Pick Flower Company, and today I am excited to be partnering with Midtown Houston Parks Conservancy for this month's Virtual Teach You Tuesday, which would normally be held the first Tuesday at Baldwin Park at 5.30 p.m. Today I'm gonna to teach you how to do a floral hoop. So, for this floral hoop, it makes a really cute sort of decor for um, an alternative to a traditional wreath. It can go as decor for an event. You can use it, hang it on your walls as wall decor. Um, kind of any way, the uses are really endless. Um, it's really great. We made ours with fresh flowers, but you can always use it silk flowers or dry flowers for longer lasting ones. Um, the fresh flowers are great for events because they're not going to last a super long time. They'll last, depending on the flowers that you use, they'll last um, up to 10 hours. So they're great for events, birthday parties, engagement showers, um, anything kind of that you're celebrating. The first few things that you're going to need in order to make a floral hoop or ring or a modern minimalist wreath is your frame. Um, so for your frame, you can use these. These are available um, in kind of our kit online. Um, so you can order them at our website, which is www.pickedflowerco.com. Um, or you can also use things from your local craft store, such as um, an embroidery hoop. You can either use the whole thing or just one of the, side, one of the pieces of an embroidery hoop. Um, you can also use a wreath frame, just the metal part, and you can spray paint it any color you would like. It also makes a great nice minimal frame. Um, if you want to do a larger one, you can use a hula hoop and spray paint that. Um, anything sort of ring shaped, you're more than welcome to use. Any different size as well. The next things you're going to need are florist tape. Again, this is available on our, in our kit or uh, at any sort of craft store, your home goods, your, um, your Michaels, sort of any place is going to have florist tape. Um, you want some wire. Uh, this is optional, I'll explain later. This one is 20 gauge. Um, that way it's still, it's not so thick, it's really hard to um, work with, but it's not so thin that it's not gonna hold much. It's a good um, gauge of wire. You need scissors um, and potentially clippers. It depends on what flowers you're working with, whether, you not, whether or not you need um, both. If you have anything with a really woody branch that's gonna be too hard to clip with your scissors, you should get some clippers. Um, most things you can probably clip with scissors though. So as long as you have scissors, you should be good. And then finally, you need ribbon. Um, well, almost finally, you need some ribbon um, and then your flowers or what you're gonna be working with, like whether that's silk flower, dried flowers, or fresh cut flowers. Um, you can also use succulents, those are really fun too. Um, and then you're gonna kind of prep everything in order to get going. So you'll have your hoop, and you're gonna cut a few pieces of florist tape. Um, I like to cut them probably about 18 inches. Um, there's no real exact way to cut them, um, but 18 inches, it's not gonna be so big that you're get, wrapping it around things and it's getting caught up. Uh, you will use some smaller pieces, but once they're cut to 18 inches, you can trim them down. Cut those. And then today we're gonna be using uh, this type of eucalyptus, it is called Ganai, Ganai eucalyptus, and basically it's got this nice color. Um, when you're picking greenery, whether it's any of those three types, your fresh cut, your um, silk, or your um, dried flowers, you want something that's gonna be nice. Like this one is kind of, it's got some movement in it. The leaves aren't overbearingly big, but there are a lot of them, and that's gonna help um, add these sort of layers of greenery and texture and they'll fall nice and easily around it. So you can kind of see this. I always like something that's not too big of a leaf. You can use bigger leaves and it'll just make a more lush, um, lush ring. And next we have these guys, we call this thistle, but the actual name is Eryngium. And um, it just adds a really nice texture. It's a very unique little flower. Um, most people probably wouldn't think to pick it up, but adding this little bit of texture in here really makes the flowers pop and complements them. Um, next we have roses, just a couple different types of roses. And the way I've designed this one here is uh, 
and that they're just the roses or the focal flowers are just in the middle you can kind of put them up and down if you have a bunch of different ones you can bring them more out here you can also design all the way around if you want it more of an like more of an actual wreath um it's totally up to you it's your project you get to do what you want um and then i have a little bit of this chamomile that i'm just adding in there for again a little bit of just a little bit of texture and a little bit of differentiation so um, once you've picked up your florals and you have everything that you need, um, you are just gonna sort of trim everything down. So you kind of want pieces that look about like this. So you can see it's probably about 10 inches. We might trim it down a little bit, but it's gonna kind of go around the edge. This one piece you can see for the design that I've already done, it's gonna start up here and then it kind of ends right in the middle at the base. Um, so these are about 10 inches. They don't all have to be that same size. I'll probably use this guy, layer him in there. Um, and then a few of these other sizes as well. So I like to start with one that's gonna kind of be my whole frame for the greenery. So it's about 10 inches for this size wreath is good. Um, if you have a larger one, you can still start with about 10 inches, but then you're just gonna keep adding more and more pieces as you go along. And I'll show you guys that in a second. So. Trim these two down, and these are my starting pieces. So, you're then gonna take one of your pieces of um, florist tape, and then you're gonna start, I like to start about three or four inches down from the top of the, the greenery, and that just ha has this little end that hangs off here, and then the rest of it will go ahead and tape so that it goes up against the ring. So I just start by placing the tape here between two, two leaves. You don't want to wrap the sort of stem of the leaf because then it's going to lay flat and it won't look quite right. So you just wrap it a couple of times around there and then you're going to work your way down to the center. And when you do that, you're just gonna kind of wrap it in between the leaves. Because again, you don't want to wrap them so that they are going against the ring. You want them to hang outward. So you just kind of wrap it. And then, um, probably after about two to three inches of wrapping it around, I'll add in another piece of greenery. And like I said, this is where I start layering them in. And you will continue that all the way to the very center. So you just kind of do the same thing. You lay it in there, and then you're going to wrap it so that you're not getting any leaves um, caught in there. And this is how you're gonna wrap it the entire time. So when we go back and add different florals and stuff, you'll still avoid wrapping the leaves. You want those so that way they're not caught up in the tape. And I like to leave my tape nice and flat, but if yours like folds over itself, it's not a big deal. You're not really gonna see it camouflages itself pretty well. Um, so you can fold it in, you can work with it however your fingers kind of work with it. It does take some getting used to. Um, the florist tape is gummy, so um, as you see here, it's not going to, doesn't stick to your hand. Well, my do does a little bit because mine has the gumminess on it. It's meant to stick to itself. So you really gotta kind of ply it as you're going down and kind of mush it into itself, if that makes sense. Because the gummier it gets on itself, the stickier it's gonna be. And the tighter you pull it, the stickier it's gonna be and the better it's gonna hold your um, flowers. So you wanna pull it tight. And like I said, if it ends up getting like thinner, folding it on itself, it's totally fine. It's just gonna help it be good, gummier and stick better. All right, and I'm gonna move on to the next. So I'm just making this one as kind of a quick example. So up next, we're going to, um, we're gonna do the other side. So this one, you will tape all the way over here, finish taping it off, and then once that's done, you'll add the other side, uh, doing it the same way, just the opposite direction. So that way, you kind of have that nice, Center. I'll show you guys with the example right here. So this is the example. Again, you see how they each go that direction? So you'll start again um, back here, the leaves going up the opposite direction. So again, you'll just kind of lay it on there. 
This one already has quite a few branches coming off of it, so I'm going to leave those branches on there because it means I won't have to layer as many. So you have the, the leaves are going the opposite direction this time. So again, I'll leave probably about three or four inches off before I start taping. Grab my other piece of tape. And start wrapping around, wrap and around. Uh, the first time I go the around the same spot a few times because again, this tape is a little bit different to use. You have to get it gummy and tight for it to work really well. So when you first start it out, you want to have it loop around the same spot quite a few times um, just so it gets stuck to itself and doesn't come undone. Hold it tight and then you work your way down to the center. And I'm just gonna quickly go through this one so I can show you guys how to add the flowers. Um, different things are, um, have different levels of ease to add. So if you want flowers that are gonna poke straight out like this rose in the center, that's a different technique than the other two roses that are going outwards. And the same thing with this thistle in here. We use a couple of different techniques. The thistle and anything that's gonna go kind of angled outwards, um, it is, you'll pretty much do it just like we're doing this greenery. You'll angle it outwards, place it where you want it, and then tape, tape the base. Um, And this, um, the tape's also really forgiving. So when you add it, you're adding in your florals, if you are going to, um, if you mess up, it's really easy to undo and start over again. You can use the same piece of tape if it's not too folded in on itself. Um, it's very, very forgiving. All right, and so we've got that piece done. And then you just kind of, when you get to the end, you just kind of really push it in and kind of just stick it so it gets tacky. All right, and this is kind of like our frame for now. It's not quite as lush as the other one. I added a lot more greenery as I was going down on that one um, through here. So you probably want to add a little more than this on yours, but I'm going to go ahead and move on because I already have an example. Um, one is like the thistle, this, you want the stems of these to be probably two to three inches, so this is a little long, I'm going to cut it down to about there, and then to put these on, you'll probably want a piece of tape that's about uh, three inches as well. So you'll take them like that, and then, same thing, you'll figure out where you want it along your hoop, and then you'll just kind of place it there, and then use the same method. You're gonna tape it around a few times in the same spot. And then work your way down over and in between the greenery, uh, making sure you're not taping down any of the leaves so they're still kind of loosely hanging out with movement. See, I got one right there taped in there and that's what you will not want to do. Let me go ahead and leave that so you can guys can see what happens when you tape them down. You don't want to do that, it kind of creates like a gap where it's just flush against there. And then when you get down to your main flowers, which for us are these orange roses and pink ones. So you're going to kind of look at them. If there's any sort of protective petals that are um, kind of imperfect, this one doesn't have any, that one doesn't have any. Let me show you guys what I mean. So these ones, how they have sort of like discoloration, they're a little bit harder, you, they have some browning on them, you wanna go ahead and just pop those off and trim them down again to about two to three inches. And when you're making them in the center, just like this, you're gonna lay them on here. I like to do both of the um, orange ones at the same time, but only in the center. If I'm working more on the sides, I like them to be a little asymmetrical, so I won't necessarily measure them on here um, quite like this. I like that little sort of nature isn't perfect, so if you're trying to make things really perfect, um, you're gonna kind of be unhappy. So 
So I want these in the middle. And then I know that I know that all the only other thing I want here is my pink rose. So I'm gonna like kind of put them so that the stems are against the base of the bloom. Um, the end of one stem and those you can kind of see that they're crossing over right here because I know that I only want one flower right here. Um, so I don't want gaps. So then you're gonna take your pieces of tape. These pieces are probably gonna want to be about six to 10 inches, um, just because the stems are a little bit longer, so you want more tape so that they're sturdier. Then I do them one at a time. I'll take one down, and then I will cover the stem completely. And if I have a lot of tape kind of left over at the end here, I'll cover it, and then I'll just go back upwards on the stem to really secure it in there nice and tight. And then you will put the other one on here. Again, secure it nice and tight. And then, then kind of have your base here where they're going out. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put this big pink rose in the middle. And this one is going to be different. So this one we want to go in flat and facing straight out. So we cut it down. We're going to cut it so that way it's pretty much flat and there's just a little teeny tiny, maybe a quarter of an inch piece of stem. And then, so if you don't want this sort of big fluffy flower in the middle here, uh, then you uh, don't need to do this part. You can just, um, whatever kind of free flowing flowers you have, you can just let them hang out in each direction. And then um, you might have a little bit of a gap, but you can go in and fill in with tape as much as you want um, with tape and other blooms. So for this though, we're gonna do about a four to five inch piece of wire. Um, if you are using scissors, you might need something a little more heavy duty to cut the wire. Uh, if it is the same sort of gauge, it is possible to cut it with scissors, but it's a little hard. Uh, then you're gonna kind of just straighten it out as nice and as straight as possible with a little bit of a curve on one end, just a slight little curve. And then you're gonna take your bloom and that little quarter inch, you're gonna kind of stick it through holding the flower firmly, um, but not so firmly that you're ripping out the, the petals. And then, because you want it to curve is so that way it'll come up the other side and not go into the bloom. There we go. And then you'll pull it out. So that way it's in kind of the middle of the wire, just like that. Then your last and final piece, you can put it on the wire twisting opposite directions on each side around the whole thing, the other blooms, and just wire it right into place, like so. And then the last little piece is you're gonna take, this again is optional, you're gonna take your ribbon, a nice long piece about arm's length, um, and then you're gonna tie, this is how you're gonna hang it, so you can just hang it single like that and make it long. You can tie a bow down here and a bow at the top if you want to. Totally up to you. You can make a little knot if tying bows is not your forte. Simple little knot like that. And then there you go. You have yourself a floral hoop. And like I said, I quickly put this one together. A full hoop like this that's full and lush and pretty should probably take you about 30 minutes to an hour, depending on how much you put into it. All right, and that is um, kind of it for this. Make sure you guys um, go follow uh, Midtown Parks on Instagram. I'll put the link right, or the handle right here so you guys know where to follow them at. Um, and then definitely check back for other tutorials. They do a bunch of Teach You Tuesday um, things all the time and available to everyone. Uh, it's definitely a great little program, so definitely check them out.